Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today on Wildcard Wednesday. My name is Ben Pulowski, I'm part of Geotab's Learning Center. Today we are going to be taking a look at the new Geotab Data Science Package. Uh, so uh, last year we, we started up uh, data.geotab.com. We now have the Data Science Package, which is sort of an extension of that, so uh, we'll be getting into that. So let's go ahead and uh, jump in here today. Uh, presenting for us today, we have Daniel Dodgson, who's our Associate Vice President of Data Engineering. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us on Wildcard Wednesday, and take it away. All right, thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. Uh, hello, everybody. So uh, as Ben mentioned, I'm going to be talking to you today about the Data Science Package. And basically just kind of give you a detailed overview of what the data science package is, how to kind of start using it, and then some some typical use cases or some use cases for the data science package to kind of get you up and running. To get you started, uh, like I said, what I want to go over is some just high level overview. So basically, what is the data science package? It is a turnkey platform to get you started with your big data endeavor. So for anybody who attended Connect last summer, uh, we had talked about the data science package. We had a booth there and basically there's a big push to kind of help everybody get started with this big data platform. And uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to help you guys get started with that. So that's what the data science package is. It's the product that we're releasing to get you up and running uh, quick and easy. Um, what we do is we do automatic extracts of your data into a Google BigQuery project. I'll go over what Google BigQuery is in a little more detail farther along this presentation. And then what you actually get as part of the data science package is you'll get uh, the last year's worth of data from your fleet into the data science package and then daily updates. Um, it is not a real-time platform, so you do not get your data in real time, but what you do get is at the end of each day, you'll get the previous day's data uploaded into your project so that you have the full day um, ready to go. So that is an overview of what the data science package is, but what it is not is a replacement for my GeoTab. So I just want to make this clear. The data science package is a separate product from my GeoTab. Um, it is not meant to replace my GeoTab, so it does not have the same rules engine. It does not have the exception reporting. What the data science package is, is the feed of your raw data into um, a Google BigQuery project. So I, I'll go into some more detail about uh, what the differences are in the data and uh, how you can actually create some of your own um, exceptions in, as part of the data science package. So what you do get as part of the data science package, like I said, you get your raw data you get a curated data set, and you get some aggregated data. So let me go through each one of these in a little bit more detail. What interpolated data is, is basically we take your raw data from the Go device, and we enrich it to give you more details about that, that data. So you get your GPS data, you get your engine data, you get your accelerometer data. With the engine data and accelerometer data, those raw data points typically do not have a GPS coordinates associated with it. So what we do is we actually look at the GPS before and after every accelerometer and engine log, and we determine where that uh, log was generated and give you the coordinates associated with that. The advantage of this is what it does is it makes it a lot easier for you to work with this data when you're using the data science package. So you can easily plot where all my uh, vehicles buckling their seatbelt or unbuckling their seatbelt or where the exact location where the harsh driving events are happening and you can very quickly just take those logs and plot them on a map. The other thing we do um, with the GPS logs specifically is that we actually add more GPS logs to the data. So we, what we do is, as I'm sure you're all familiar, we have a curve algorithm that we run on the Go device to basically optimize which logs should be sent through to my GeoTab. Uh, this is, makes it more cost efficient and uh, better for reporting in my GeoTab. When we get the data in the data science package, what we actually do is we add more GPS data to that. So we look at the, the data points and we say, okay, because of the curve algorithm, we can interpolate this data and we can fill in the missing points um, of where this vehicle has been driving. And what we do is we actually add the data so that you get 10 meter resolution on your GPS points. This adds a lot more granularity to the GPS data when you're working with it. 
and it allows you to get a lot more insight in terms of when your vehicle is passing through, let's say, a particular intersection or a particular zone where there's been, uh, or that we've classified as a, a dangerous um, intersection or uh, any type of um, area that we've identified like that, that's where this enriched GPS data um, becomes very powerful. And then with regards to the curated data sets, what we do is we, we provide some kind of default um, exceptions for you. So again, these are not the exceptions that you get from my GeoTab, but what we've done is we've kind of mimicked what you would see there. So for seatbelt, idling, and harsh driving, we've based, we've created these same type of exceptions and we'll put that data into your um, BigQuery project for you. Um, if you want to change the metrics of what a seatbelt infraction is or what an idling infraction is, then what we can do is we can give you the queries that we use to generate these exceptions, and you can rerun that data and build your own exceptions from there. Again, the advantage is you have all the raw data, so you can really customize how you want this to work. We also send through your trips from my GeoTab, the VIN data, so we build a VIN history table for you, and the vehicle vocation data. So the vehicle vocation data, if you're not familiar with it, it's data that we've started putting together in the data and analytics team, where we look at a vehicle's driving behavior and we are able to start classifying what type of vehicle uh, or what type of service the vehicle provides. This data set we have provided as part of the data science package because we do use that in some of um, the projects and uh, that we're working on on the data and analytics team. And then the, the, the final kind of category of data that we provide is the aggregated data. And this is all the, the data that you see on data.geotab.com. So these are the free data sets that we've already um, made available you get access to all those data sets so that you can start working with that. And I'll go through some examples later and how you can start to um, use the data as that's part of the data science package, either on its own, with the aggregated data, or with some other type of data that you've decided to bring in. So let's just quickly go over who is the data science package for. So the data science package, we have a couple recommendations. What we recommend is that it's typically for customers who have fleets of 500 or more vehicles and a, over a year's worth of Go device tracking data. The reason we've said that is because really we want to make sure you have enough data to, to really leverage the data science package. Um, this platform, like I said, it's not a click and run a report. It is a data science platform. You are going to be in there. You're going to be doing a lot of analytics and a lot of the power of the type of analytics that you would be doing come from when you have a large volume of data. So that's why we make these recommendations. However, it's not set in stone. If you have 200 vehicles and you feel like this is going to be an option for you, by all means, have at it. The one requirement we do put in place is that you have someone or have access to a data scientist or a data analytics team, or at least someone who is proficient with SQL. All this data is stored in Google BigQuery, so unless you have someone who knows how to write SQL queries, you cannot get this data out. So that is a must for uh, someone to be able to use this platform. So let's just go over how it works here. So there's really two components to the data science package. Like I said, we've tried to make this simple and easy for you to get up and running and have your big data platform. So the two components that, that exist are an add-in that's part of the marketplace, and then Google BigQuery. So I'll go into each of these in a little bit more detail. So the data science package add-in, what it is, it's a very simple and lightweight add-in. There's really no analytics that is done through the actual add-in itself. The add-in is really just there to enable the data science package service. Okay, I'll go into a little bit more detail again of what the actual pipeline process looks like, but through the add-in, you have the ability to enable and disable the data science package, and you have the ability to add users that will have access to the data. All the data is actually accessed through Google BigQuery, so that is why there's the, the user field in as part of the add-in. It's how we control which users will have access to the Google BigQuery project. In order for someone to actually use the data science package add-in, you must be an administrator in my GeoTab. And this is because there's, there is a, a cost for the data science package. We want to make sure that the right people are turning on this service and it is the, a correct business uh, decision for, for that customer. I'm just going to put a quick pause here. So Google BigQuery. 
Um, I'm not sure how many people are actually get familiar with Google BigQuery. I'm not going to go into it in a lot of detail. There's a lot of documentation online and we've provided quite a bit of documentation through our user guide for the data science package. But I do want to give you guys a quick overview of what it is. Okay, so Google BigQuery in short is basically Google's big data platform. It's their, their web hosted big data platform. It's a fully managed enterprise data solution that allows you to store and query massive amounts of data in seconds. So we're ingesting over 4 billion rows of data into our Google BigQuery project alone from our telematics data. We're able to query that data in seconds. So it really does show the power of this platform. And this is why we've gone with this platform, not only for ourselves, but for setting up the data science package product, because it is something that makes it very, very easy to start doing this long-term analysis and really start to understand what is happening uh, in your fleet. So to go over it, again, very high level, I've been throwing around some of these terms in terms of BigQuery project, BigQuery data set tables. I just want to go over what each of these is. So a project is essentially, it's a, it's a container as part of the Google Cloud Platform. And BigQuery is just one entity in the Google Cloud Platform. You don't need to worry about any of the other services as part of the Google Cloud Platform. The data science package only links into Google BigQuery. So as far as you're concerned, a project in Google BigQuery, a project relates to a cu your, your customer's database. Um, a data set, you can think of this now as almost any type of SQL uh, database infrastructure, where a data set is essentially like a database. So it's a top level container within your project, and it's what allows you to organize and structure your tables and views within Google BigQuery. And then much like a, a standard SQL database, we have tables, and tables are how we organize the different types of data. So when we uh, create a project for a customer database, a table, we will create different tables for the different types of data. So we create a table for GPS data, engine data, accelerometers, seatbelt. Each of these will fall into a different table. And then you can join these tables and even join tables in different data sets in order to do your analytics. Okay, so let's jump back to uh, what I was talking about before, the kind of two components of the data science package. We have the add-in and we have BigQuery. So what happens when you click enable that service in the add-in? So when you click, when you enable that service, what we actually do is, this is what um, we've built out for you and we take care of all this on the back end, is what we do is we create a new Google BigQuery project. It's contained within the GeoTab organization of Google BigQuery. We create a specific project for your customer database or the database that um, you've just enabled the service for. We create the default data sets and tables that I've um, briefly mentioned. Um, there's a full list of these in the user guides um, and brochures that we've provided uh, for what's included in the data science package. And then what we do is we actually schedule from the time, once you enable that service, we actually, in order for you to get data as soon as possible, we go back to the previous day and we grab all that data and we push it into your project so that you have something to start working with within 30 minutes of enabling that service. Then later that evening, what we do is we schedule the jobs to run that will actually upload the last year's worth of data into your Google BigQuery project so that, again, after 24 hours, now you'll have a year plus worth of data that you can actually start to query and analyze and do some reporting on. And then we have nightly jobs that will run. So like I said before, it's not a real time process that we're, we're running where as soon as the data is recorded from the device, it gets pushed in. It's a nightly process where once the day is done, we grab the completed day's data and push it into your project for you. And all this information is made available through Google BigQuery. So this is just a small little snapshot of what one component of Google BigQuery, but essentially how the structure looks. So you have your, your project up top here. Um, this is just a sample project that we've created. Um, and then you have your data set. And within that data set, you have all the tables that GeoTab has created and is uploading their data, uh, the data to for you for your data science project. All this data is hosted by Google in the Google Cloud Platform. 
and like I said, we provide the interpolated uh, data sets, we provide the curated data sets, and we give you access to the aggregated data sets. So we don't actually make copies of all the data sets that we have on data.geotab.com and put them into your project. Those are actually hosted in a different project. But one of the advantages of Google BigQuery is that you can have m multiple projects in Google BigQuery and you can query across those projects seamlessly as if they're all that data is contained in one project. So what we do is for the aggregated data sets, we give you access to those data sets and then you're able to see them as if they are part of your data science package project. And then on top of everything we provide, we give you and the users that you add to your project the ability to add new data to Google, your Google BigQuery project. And this is really where the power comes in of the data science package. All the information we provide is great. You can do a lot with it we encourage you to be able to upload your own data, so your own business data into Google BigQuery so that now you can start to cross-reference your telematics data with data from other lines of business so that you can start to understand what is happening in your fleet, what is happening in your business, and you can start to draw insight from that. So, where do we get started? Like I said, I'm gonna take a quick step-by-step -step approach here of different things you can do with the data in the data science package. To get started, the, simp the best thing to do is just, just look at your telematics data. What kind of insight can you start to draw from the telematics data alone? So here's just a simple query that I put together, nothing fancy, um, and essentially what I did is I just looked at um, for each geohash, so geohash is just a, um, a geospatial representation of an area on a map. It's basically the world broken down into uh, different squares, and um, depending on the number of uh, characters that you're looking at for your geohash, the, uh, they either get larger or smaller. So it's a good way to start to analyze and understand what is happening from a geospatial point of view. So here what I did is I just wrote a query that looked at group by geohash, looked at the number of times that a vehicle was speeding over 120 kilometers per hour within a geohash, and I looked at data for um, over the last two months, so back from April 1st. And what I could quickly start to see here is that Here's a list of all the geohashes where I had speeding events over 120 kilometers per hour and the number of unique or distinct vehicles that uh, contributed to those speeding events in that area. Again, very simple query. Start, you can start to kind of get insight in terms of what's happening in your fleet and you can start to ask more questions about this data, right? This is kind of how the whole process starts is you start with something small and then you start to ask more questions and you start to join that data up with other things. So, where do we go from there? Well, the next thing you, we, we recommend is you take that data and you, you join that in with the aggregated data sets that we provide. So things like hazardous driving areas or service centers or fuel stations. Now you start to cross-reference your telematics data with other data sets that we've provided to you. Now you can start to understand, okay, of the trips that my fleet's performing, how many of those trips are going through the hazardous driving areas that Geotab's defined? Looking at that, now you can start to, again, start to look at what uh, decisions you can make from a business point of view. Do you want to start rerouting around these hazardous driving areas? Do you notice that you have a lot of harsh um, driving events in these same hazardous driving areas that Geotab's identified? If so, how are you going to take action on that to prevent accidents from happening? Right. So a lot of these, th this information can be derived. Again, all this is right now just from the data we've provided. Now we want to take that one step further. What we do is we can start with Geotab's trip data because we provide that to you. You look at your start and stop location and times of your trips. You can bring in your retail location. So you can bring in your store locations and see, now cross-reference that with how many trips are starting at your store locations. And you can bring in your customer locations, assuming you have that available. Then you bring in your point of sales transactions. Now you can start to paint a big picture here in terms of what is happening in your fleet, right? So bringing in all this information, bringing in this subsequent information, your, your store locations, your customer locations, and your point of sales uh, transactions, what are you able to start to see? Well, we can start to look at what percentage of your stops are at customer locations, are at store locations, or just at an unknown location that you haven't identified, right? Then you can start to look at 
what are your busiest customer locations? What are your busiest store locations, right? And you can start to really understand what your fleet is doing at these different locations, you know, and then again, from that, you can start to look at where your longest stop times, where your shortest stop times, and you can start to draw, take action on this. Some of this, yes, a lot of this information um, can be pulled from my GeoTab, but what the data science package allows you to do is it allows you to do this on a long-term basis. So now you can start to look year over year. You can look at seasonality. You can say, okay, last winter compared to this winter, and you can run those queries all at once in seconds to get this type of insight and get this type of information and start to take action on that. The other things you can start to look at is from that same type of information, what is your vehicle availability like? So based on the store locations you put into the data science package, how many vehicles do you have available at each store? You can start to do an analysis and see, do you ever have at any point in time during the day a shortage of vehicles at a particular store? If so, how can, we, how can you correct that, right? Are there other store locations where you can have multiple, uh, a vehicle from another store cater to some of the customers from a different location? So all, these, all, these, all this information can start to come into light uh, from the data science package by bringing in uh, data from other parts of your business. And even something as simple as just finding new stores, finding locations that you uh, maybe didn't have in my GeoTab. Maybe these stores weren't documented. So this is an exercise that we actually went through where we were able to look at common locations where vehicles were going and parking together overnight, and we were able to identify store locations or zones that actually were not in the MyGeoTab database. We found these zones that, uh, from the, the data in the data science package, and we were able to uh, create new, new zones in the data science package and import those back into MyGeoTab. So by doing this type of analysis, by doing uh, some of this data science work, we're able to look at common locations where vehicles are clustering, um, where they're going during the day, and then you can start to use this information to, again, optimize which locations are catering to certain customers. But also, like I said, there's a lot of different insight you can, you can start to understand from this. And you as the customers or you and the resellers, you're going to have the best insight in terms of what a specific customer is actually looking for. We want to just empower you with the tools and the data um, to be able to get that insight. We want to give you direction and help you get there. But at the end of the day, you're going to be the ones that are going to be able to ask the right questions for your business and for your fleet in order to start optimizing how your fleet works. So again, where does this take you? Um, this is where we, we want to encourage you, again, as part of the data science package to not only use the telematics data, but to bring in data from other parts of your business. And like I said, that could be store locations, it could be customer locations, point of sales transactions. It could be third party data sets, open data sets uh, from just from the, the internet, weather data sets, traffic data sets. All this type of information you can start to bring in and join with your telematics data. And that's where you really start to, to get the full power and the full benefit of the data science package. And with that, that's basically a wrap up of everything I have to say about the data science package. Uh, ben, I'm not sure if there's any questions that we want to go over. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A question that we had come in is when will this be available? Ah, great question. So the data science package, we actually had a boot camp here a couple of weeks ago. And at that time I had said we were a couple of weeks out from um, launching the data science package. Right now the expected launch is it's going to be, I would say, next week. Um, we're, we're ready to kind of push this out the door um, and get it get it going. Great. Um, so you had talked uh, toward the beginning about how when you uh, initially sign up, it gives you 365 days worth of data. Does it continue to give you each day after 365 days so that, you know, in time you'd be able to go back two years? Correct. Yes. The answer to that is yes. So we do the, the initial upload of the last year's worth of data, so the last 365 days of data, and then onward, every single night, we do a, uh, a new upload of the previous day's data. So if you signed up today, then 
every day onward, you will continue to get the previous day's data and it will just be added to your data set. So yes, a year from now, you would have two years worth of data. And the information, uh, is it going to be available in both metric and imperial? So everything is going to be metric. There is no imperial, but that is actually good feedback and I can take that back to the team. Um, it can be a simple conversion table that we can add as part of the process. But again, with the raw data, even the raw data we get from the telematics data is all metric um, and the conversion actually happens in my geotab. So because we're working with that raw data, it's going to be in metric. And if a conversion needs to be done, then we can have a, a conversion table that can be referenced uh, so that when you do the query, the calculation can be done. Now, we do have uh, a, a few people asking uh, about pricing here, and I know that we're not going to be getting into pricing today. Uh, probably would be best to, to reach out to either your reseller or, or your account manager for that information. I don't know if you have anything you want to add on to that. Yeah, so that's, that, that is correct. Um, so what, what I can tell you for about pricing is that it's going to be a flat rate, but definitely reach out to your, um, your PAM or your reseller and we can get that information for you. Uh, we're just finalizing all that, but it's going to be a flat rate for this pricing. So just to go into a little bit more detail, the way that uh, BigQuery works is that every time you run a query, there's a cost associated with that query and there's a cost associated with the storage of data. So as part of this platform, we are not penalizing anybody for how many queries they run, um, for how much data they store. We are charging just a flat rate for that um, and that's, that's part of the package. So you, do, you, won't, you won't see fluctuations month to month. It's going to be a flat rate for the data science package. Do we get the aggregated data when we sign up? Yeah, so as I had mentioned, you, you get access to the aggregated data. And what I mean by that is that any accounts that you add to the data science package will be given permanent access to the public data sets and they will show up in your project as if they were there. We just don't physically make copies of that data and put it into everybody's project because it would just be redundant and it's not necessary, but you get access to it and you see it as if it is uh, part of your project. Is there a cap on the number of years of data within the data science package? Um, at this point in time, no. I mean, in terms of how far we go back, there is a cap, and that's that one-year cap right now. But in terms of we're not going to say we're only going to maintain a year and a half for you, and then we're going to start truncating the data. That's not the case. We're going to just continue to accumulate that data for you. Um, like I said, that is the power of kind of big data, and that's what you want um, you want that kind of long-term data for. So you had mentioned uh, the recommendation of uh, 500 vehicles or more. We had a question, what if a customer has less than 500 vehicles? Yeah, so again, that's not, that's a, it's a recommendation. It's not a requirement. If you have 400 vehicles, 200 vehicles, heck, if you have 10 vehicles, go ahead, sign up for it. That's not a problem. But again, the power of big data comes from the volume of data that you have there, right? Chances are, if you have 10 vehicles, a lot of the reporting and insight that you want to get, you could realistically use the, the, the feed or my geotab to get that information. But again, I'm, we're not saying, no, you can't sign up for it if you have 10 vehicles, but we just want to give people guidance saying, realistically, if you have 10 vehicles, how much in, uh, you know, insight are you going to be able to get from running some of these queries on 10 vehicles? So we just want to kind of give you that guideline, but by, by all means, you're able to, to sign up for it with any number of vehicles. Sure. Uh, is BigQuery accessible via Python or does the data have to be downloaded? So that's actually a great question. What we actually also provide, and I apologize, I noticed it wasn't in the deck now that you mentioned that, is part of the data science package, we provide sample uh, Python notebooks, IPython notebooks. That is how um, we at Geotab interact with the data. Uh, so a lot of us will work in the BigQuery UI just to structure our queries, figure out what data we want, and then we put everything into an IPython notebook to be able to do uh, some of the more advanced data science work, build machine learning models and things like that. So it's definitely compatible with Python. And again, there's some great documentation on Google BigQuery and what, um, what different languages are supported from their API to, to extract that data out and work with it. 
All right, we have another question here. I believe this is referencing data.geotab.com. Uh, is this the Smart Cities Intuition tab? So, no, this is not the Smart Cities Intuition tab. This is a different entity kind of all together. So the data sets on data.geotab.com they are the aggregated data sets. So what we do is we look at, um, you know, all the, the Geotab Go device data and we build out these data sets like the weather data sets, the service centers, fuel centers, um, everything you see on the website. The data science package, it's different in the sense that it's actually your fleet's raw data put into Google BigQuery. So when you enable this service, the raw data from your fleet's uh, Go devices gets put into Google BigQuery for you to look at the, the GPS, the engine data, the, the accelerometer data. Um, you can start to do your own smart city insights, uh, but this is not related to the smart cities insight tab in uh, as part of data.geotab.com. Um, well, we realize that, that this is a very uh, robust topic, so uh, of course, if, if uh, any of you have additional questions, please reach out to your reseller, reach out to your account manager, and, uh, and we can get you the answers that you need. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us today on Wildcard Wednesday and uh, introducing us to the data science package. No problem. It was my pleasure. All right. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for attending. We appreciate taking time out of your day, and I uh, hope everyone has a great day and a great week. Thanks, everyone.